Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky, What's Up This Week. The Spring Equinox occurs on March 20th, and that means that we are moving into a time of year when we have less and less dark skies because the sky gets brighter and brighter uh, as we move forward into the season. Now that's of course for the Northern Hemisphere. My Southern Hemisphere viewers are going into autumn down there and they actually get, are getting darker and darker skies. Uh, so apologies to those of you south of the equator. But for those of you to the north, I wanted to take a look at what's coming up in the spring sky so you can get a sense of uh, how things look. And I'm also gonna go through a couple of the new Stellarium features, uh, which have some interesting ability to manipulate how the software works. We begin by looking at where the brightest objects are that are in our sky and uh, where they're going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the galactic equator. You can find that here uh, when you go to your sky and viewing options window. Click on the markings tab and then click on the galactic equator. You can see where that is and you notice how there's lots of objects that are kind of clustered around that particular line. Mostly open clusters. Uh, we're looking away from the center of our galaxy at the moment. Uh, so that's a lot of what's out there. There are a few nebula that way, such as the um, Orion Nebula, which is going to be right down here uh, in this area. Um, but if we scoot ahead a little bit in time, and I'm actually just going to kind of go ahead a little bit like this just to kind of get the moon out of the way so things are a little bit darker, uh, we can see how there's this big blank section of the sky uh, over that direction and if you notice as I kind of move forward a little bit all those things over here are moving towards that western horizon so they're getting lower uh, and as we move even in towards like the end of April um, all those things become very uh, low to the horizon and as we go about halfway into I'll leave the moon over there uh, we go about just about halfway into uh, spring we wind up losing really almost all of the galaxy, our galaxy anyway, because we are now no longer looking uh, into the, if you think of the, the moon or the galaxy as a giant pizza, and we're in the pizza about two thirds of the way out towards the crust. Uh, we're no longer looking through the cheese of the pizza uh, through this area of our galaxy. We're looking up and out away from it. Uh, when we look into this area, you can even take the azimuthal grid and kind of see how uh, far away, how many degrees away the plane of our galaxy is. And this area is kind of looking straight up and out of our galaxy, which I think is kind of a, a neat thing. Uh, however, it doesn't appear that there's a lot there, right? Because we've got the Beehive Cluster, we have Messier 3 as a globular cluster, uh, we have Messier 13 and M92 kind of hanging out over there. And these are, you know, in the beginning of May. However, I do want to show you what you can do with some of these new features in Stellarium. You can take your Deep Sky Objects tab and there's this section called Labels and Markers. Uh, and I have labels all the way zoomed over. Uh, if you pull that down, you, you lose almost everything. So I've got that way over like this. Uh, but if you, and let me actually pull this over this way like that. So we're just, cause we're just gonna kind of use that section. You can still see these deep sky objects here. So if we actually take the hints section and start scrolling on that, you can see a lot more things come along and you notice how a lot more things happen along our galaxy. But then look what happens here directly overhead in that area that we're looking out of our galaxy. You see all these little red spots and what are those? Well, if you look closely, you can see that we've got, let me change one thing quickly. Um, if you use use designations for screen labels, it pulls up the Messier or NGC or IC number for an object. So for example, uh, it calls Messier 41 the little beehive cluster. I've never heard it called the little beehive cluster before, so that's a new one for me. I just know it as Messier 41. Uh, but if you, so if you click on use designations for screen labels, that will then make your screen say Messier 41, not the little beehive cluster. So if you want to know what a Messier object is, click on that and it'll tell you exactly what it is. Now, if you want to know what someone else has decided to name, what they think a galaxy looks like, you can take that off 
and then you say, oh, well, this is the Cigar Galaxy, or this is the Pinwheel Galaxy, or whatever. I don't care for that. I'd rather just know that's M81 and M82. Uh, we can also see M51 right here, which is also known as sometimes the Whirlpool Galaxy, pretty well known as that. Uh, Messier 64 is the Black Eye Galaxy because it's got a big dust lane in it. Uh, but you notice how there's all these galaxies hanging out in this part of the sky. That's because we're looking up and away from the plane of our galaxy, looking towards our local supercluster of galaxies. There's a lot of pretty bright ones in here that I'm going to try to cover uh, as we go into spring because galaxies can be tough to spot. Uh, and there's not a lot of bright stars because, again, looking up and out away from the galaxy. And so uh, we had star hopping becomes a little bit more challenging. But we can do it. I know you can do it. And uh, we will try to take a look at that uh, going forward through the portion of uh, spring where we've got some of these galaxies that, that are in this great location where they're overhead. And we're looking through the least amount of atmosphere so we can see a lot of things. If we go ahead just a little bit more uh, and bump up over into June, the late part of spring, you can see how now we get uh, our Milky Way is coming back. Uh, it's rising in the east. And this is the section of the Milky Way that's looking towards the center of our galaxy. So we were looking out and away. And then that part of the galaxy that is uh, looking towards the central region comes back into view. Our galaxies are starting to move towards the west a little bit uh, at 10 o'clock, but you'd still be able to see some, except that the moon then starts to infringe on things uh, in the middle of the month. But early in June, we'll be able to see that. Uh, but all those star clusters and nebula and things like that. Uh, and even uh, you can notice how they've got a different color now in Stellarium for the globular clusters, which some of them are enough further away that uh, we will be able to catch some of those during the spring as well. We're going to try to look for uh, like Messier 3 uh, over here by Arcturus, which I'm sorry, is right there. And then Messier 53, uh, which is right there, also by Arcturus. Uh, and then we'll look for some of the other ones later uh, in the early, late part of spring and early summer. But uh, you'll notice now when we bring all this stuff back down, whoosh, pull all that back down. Oh, we finally have a planet that <laughs> comes into view in late, late spring, uh, because that's June that that really starts to come into view. You might be able to see it a little sooner, um, you know, along about, uh, it's 15 degrees up by 11 o'clock in late May, but uh, that's really about the only planet that we have. So we're going to do a lot of deep sky object observing for uh, much of the rest of the season. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can see those galaxies. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.